Hey y'all. Hola. Welcome to 30 Minutes Down South. She's Allison. And he's Carlos. And we are two top producing realtors. With two extremely different Southern upbringings. Join us each week as we explore the Lake Murray area with our special guest. Welcome, Allison, to our Christmas episode. I know. You can't help but smile at this one. I know, right? We're going to have a special guest. I yes. even wore... Can you see him? Oh, you have uh, Santa earrings. I have Santa earrings you make in those? his honor. No, I didn't make them. Well, I mean, like they look like somebody could make them. They well, look I'm handmade. Sure, somebody could. Well, Maybe somebody will ask for some for Christmas. But well, you know, they're handmade, so why not? That's right. Um, so yeah, we're going to have the real Santa. We're going to have a FaceTime. He's in the North Pole. He's uh, very uh, busy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at this time he's about to. You know, finish up. Who's a naughty? Who's nice? What's the cutoff for not? That's a question we have to ask. Ooh, him, right? that is a good question. I've never thought about that. Yeah, because like if you send your letter on the first of December, right? Yeah. Then you technically have that twenty days to do whatever you want. Mm, and actually, ju- but just because the letter is sent does not mean that your gift list has been finalized. Well, you know, that's actually one thing that I thought when I was a kid. <laughs> oh really? <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that particular time between when the letter is sent to when the gift is gone. It's like free for all. So I think there are so many different um, like family traditions mm-hmm. as well as um, like area specific, colloquial, all of that that people do. And one one conversation that's come up recently is: Does Santa wrap the gifts that come to your house, or are they just laid out? Well, that's why he has those little elves to help him. He doesn't necessarily... I mean, like, what does he do the whole year? He keeps up with the naughty and nice list. I don't know. We're going to have to ask him. That's, that's another good question. How, how, how can you keep up with the list, you know, say in July? So say that you, when you're already when naughty on the summer, does that screws up the whole year? Or you like you get one good action, kills the other. You know what I mean? Like, what's the... I don't know. And you know that there's still a naughty and nice list for adults. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Who keeps track of that stuff? We watched the movie Elf Friday night, uh-huh. and there's a naughty and nice list for adults. All right. Sorry to disappoint you. How about this? Why? I'm nice. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm the nicest guy on earth. <laughs> yes, you are. And we are going to... How about we start the conversation with Santa? Um, it's via satellite. Yeah, regular. He doesn't have cell phone uh, over there, so we really? had to go through satellite phone. It was very expensive, very complicated, but we did it for you. Let's see him. Oh my God, it's the real one, Allison. It's Santa. Woo-hoo! Hello. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Santa. Do we call you Santa? Do you call what, Mr. Santa? Mr. Claus. Mr. You, Claus. You know that first of all. I go by many, many monikers. Mm -hmm. That means names, of course. It depends on what part of the country, or I should say what part of the world you're from. I go by Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, Father Christmas, Père Noël, um, Kris Kringle. There are so many. But I think um, Santa is the most friendly and and sort of, um, I don't know, I think it just has a nice ring to it, don't you? I agree. Absolutely. So, you, correct me if uh, we're grown, but you are right now on the North Pole. You're getting ready for Christmas. You got your last minute uh, packing. How much? Uh, tell me a little bit how this is going right now. What's 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 it like on a daily basis? Wonderful, wonderful question. And first of all, let me thank you both once again, if I haven't already. Thank you for having me on your show, Carlos and Allison. Did I get it correct? Yes. Well, we oh. appreciate you coming on. We know what a busy time of year it is for you. It has been crazy. Carlos, to answer your question, yes, we are doing a remote from the North Pole. I am in what we call the hot cocoa room or the hot cocoa parlor and mrs claus is away in the kitchen she is being helped by many elves and we are so busy right now 
the preparations are going well, the deer are doing fine, and they are out in the stables right now being looked after by many of my helpers. So it seems that everything is a-okay for departure on the 24th of this month. Santa, you mentioned you're in the hot cocoa room, and I have three girls, and they are all about the hot chocolate. So we have a little debate. I know. (laughs) We have a debate in our house. One of our daughters prefers whipped cream on her hot chocolate, and the other two prefer marshmallows on the top. What's your favorite? Well, that is wonderful. I'll tell you what. I think. When you're talking about whipped cream and marshmallows, there's no wrong answer to this. <laughs> Your daughters are as intelligent and educated and bright as you are, Allison. Oh, and thank you. if they want marshmallows, they can have marshmallows. If they want whipped cream, they can have whipped cream. Santa's favorite is marshmallows <laughs> and whipped cream. <laughs> A man after my own heart. What about oh, the, yes. What about the cookies? We, we're asking, oh, we're wondering, goodness, which one is your favorite? Ask, you know something? I am asked this question every single year. My favorite cookies are chocolate chip. But I, um, I like all kinds of cookies. I like the kind where you take the peppermint canes and you crush them up and you bake those inside of the dough. Oh, my God. Goodness, I could go on and on. <laughs> we had a little discussion about that earlier. Carlos Carlos was right. He said chocolate chip would be your favorite. He is absolutely correct. And, you know, Carlos remembers that because it was some 30-some-odd years ago <laughs> that I used to stop by his home and check my list and see whether he had been good or whether he had been rather naughty. And I am happy to say that he made my nice list most of the time. <laughs> most and of the time, <laughs> Santa. It was all the time. <laughs> all right. All right. I cannot tell a lie. I, Santa sometimes likes to give a little ribbing to my friends. But Carlos was wonderful all the time and made the nice list every year. But he used to leave for me these delicious chocolate chip cookies every year that I used to come over and check and make sure he was asleep. And I would eat them all up before I would lay a finger aside my nose and go straight back up the chimney to go to the next house. Santa, Isn't Christmas wonderful? That is awesome. That is awesome. And you know what? It's 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 great to have you here because it's the very first time I'm able to talk to you. And you've always go into my house and gave me so many presents and gave presents to my friends and my friends' friends. And I never got the opportunity to thank you. So I really want to thank and you. No, listen, you are most welcome. You know, we had talked about having me on your podcast, but you know... Santa is a very busy man, if you didn't yeah. already know that, Carlos. <laughs> mm-hmm. I have lots going on. I don't just have this or that. But I am so happy that we could make time for me to come here. You know, I think that uh, we also discussed the possibility of me flying my sleigh to Chapin and coming straight into Remax and and being there with you. But unfortunately, you know, we are so busy at the North Pole at this time of year. We just couldn't make that happen. But look at us. I'm on TV. <laughs> You're famous. I'm famous. Yes. Santa, how do, you, how do you manage to visit every single kid in just one night? I, I, that's, that's something that really blows my mind. Uh, That is a wonderful, wonderful question, and it has a lot to do with science, thermodynamics. I can tell you that thermodynamics are a part of the whole thing. And you know the reason that I don't discuss such things about this magical, quasi-scientific way that I'm able to do it? It's because it bores the children. (laughs) They want to know about gifts. They want to see me arrive or be asleep and then wake up and have me appear and give them gifts. But it's a wonderful question. And someday we might sit down and have to talk about the science of Santa Claus. 
Oh, I'm very intrigued by the Very this intrigued. How's, how's that for avoiding, <laughs> avoiding to answer the question? Yeah, That's you right. I, I, I'm pretty sure it's not the first time you've asked this question before. No, no, no. <laughs> I, think a, I, I get asked all the time. Another favorite question of the children is always about the reindeer Santa. So you said that they're out in the stable now. Yes. Um, do you always bring Rudolph or is it just when it's a cloudy or stormy evening and you need his nose to light the way? What a fantastic question, Alison. And you know something else. If you'll recall, Alison, I remember the Christmas that you desperately wanted that Cabbage Patch doll. And I was able to swing that for you. And I, I hope that you still remember and that you still hold on. To I that. did. Lucy was one of my favorites. Well, I remember, dear Lucy. She still plays with them. It's such a pleasure to be able to make that dream come true for you. And answer to your question, I bring Rudolph with me all the time, every single flight. And do you know why? The reason is this. It may, the weather forecast may be nice and light and clear skies. But the problem is you never know how it's going to end up. And of course, I'm flying all over the world. So in one area, it might be clear skies. In another, it may be a foggy night. Mm. So I rely on Rudolph and his brilliant red nose to light my way. How's that for answering your question in 15 minutes? I never <laughs> even thought about it, Santa, but you were exactly right. Santa, another question that we always, I have always asked myself, how do you get so many toys in that red um, uh, bag that you have on your sledge? How do you fi how do you fill them up? I mean, it's millions and millions of toys. That is a wonderful question, and I'm going to give you the honest answer. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see me, there is sort of an illusion. If you if you look up in the sky and you see me on the 24th flying by, you see me in one sleigh flying by with my eight tiny reindeer. Well, those are the main reindeer, and I am the main man, as mm -hmm. you call mm -hmm. it. But, you know, we have drop-offs. That's right. I have elves and helpers who have other sleighs filled with toys and if you've ever learned about oh. airlines and the huge Boeing airplanes that actually get fueled in mid-flight, yeah. that's sort of that's sort of how oh. this happened. Wow. So does that answer your question? Do you see where I'm going? Yes, with yeah. yes. They kind of come and refill you when you're running low. This is absolutely correct. It's always me who does the delivery. But they but come I'm in and out. Little, that's right. I need a little help. Oh. Wow, that makes sense. Well, at, to kind of piggyback on Carlos asking how you get so many toys in that red bag, I was just yes. telling him about one of my favorite Christmas movies, Elf. Have you <sighs> ever had something sneak into your bag, Santa, that has come back to the North Pole with you? Yes, you won't believe this. I'm telling tales out of school, but I'll tell you the truth. There was a time <laughs> when the movie was just premiering it was coming out and ed asner was unable he was not feeling well that night so he was unable to don the santa clothing and go out to hollywood for the big premiere so guess what i got a little call from hollywood and i came in to do the premiere <laughs> but guess who snuck inside my sleigh and fell asleep will ferrell oh my god <laughs> i you this is an absolute true story. You won't believe it, but it's true. Will Ferrell snuck into my sack. He fell asleep, and we ended up taking him all the way to the North Pole. He was a lovely man. He's a very large man, <laughs> as you know. It's not a great look, Will Ferrell. So he was the, in uh, character, yellow, basically. In the yellow tights. However... <laughs> We had a wonderful weekend that weekend of the premiere, and he stayed with us, and we put him up, and then we had to fly him back, of course, because they had a what we call a junket in Hollywood. They had to go around, and Will had to, you know, announce this wonderful premiere of the film Elf. But all that was a good time. I couldn't believe <laughs> he jumped out like that. That is awesome. That I got is... one question, one more question for you, Mr. Santa. Yes. How, like, we were talking about this actually off camera. Is there, like, a cutoff date so 
When I was a kid, I remember that I would send a letter, say at the beginning of December, and then in my own head, I thought, well, if I send the letter to Santa on the beginning of December, then I have between the beginning of December all the way to Christmas to do whatever I want because he's already made the decision whether I'm naughty or nice. Is that true? Where is your cutoff for being naughty? And where is your cutoff for being nice? Are you absolutely joking right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Carlos, he thinks there's you a cutoff. Of all people, he should know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's the first time I've ever been asked <laughs> cutoff time on good behavior. Listen to me, young man. There is no cutoff time. <laughs> you have to be good up until the last minute that you fall asleep. Very, very important. But let me give you some good news on that. Uh, there's something else that it's good for the children to understand. If they haven't made up their mind about what they would like for Santa to bring to them for Christmas morning, it's okay. They don't need to worry about it. Sometimes children get a little panicky when I ask them, what would you like for me to bring you? And they say, I, I don't know yet. I say, it's all right. Mm -hmm. What the children need to do is think, think, think of what they would like. I have a magical crystal ball where I can tell what's going on in their minds, oh. but they have to share this information with their parents. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that they need to tell their parents what they would like for Christmas is because Christmas is a magical time of unity and you need more than just one person to wish something to come true. And who are the closest, most powerful people in the children's lives? Their parents or their caregivers. Mm -hmm. So it's always important to let them know what they're thinking and they can do this even as late as the 24th. It really doesn't matter. Santa is a magical man. And when we work with our parents and let them know what our wishes are, that gives me strong vibrations through my crystal ball. And I can tell what they want. I make no promises, of course, but I think about it and I do the best that I can. Well, Santa, my six-year-old, announced in church two weeks ago that she was asking for a cell phone for Christmas. Um, and I informed her she could write you as many letters as possible. But as a six-year-old, she would not be receiving a cell phone from you or it, me. <laughs> yes, I. Th this is a very good point as well. Sometimes children ask for things that are very special to them. They think maybe a cell phone might be nice to receive on Christmas morning under the tree or in the stocking. But, you know, Allison, you make a very good point. It's Santa works closely with parents and what the parents know is best for that child. So if the parents know that at six years of age, that's a little young to be sporting a, an iPhone, <laughs> yeah. um, Just then bit. I am in agreement with that. And we simply need to let your little one know that don't worry, the year will come when she will be ready for that iPhone and it will be an appropriate gift. But for now, there are other wonderful things that she can can look for and wish for for Christmas morning. That's right. Thank you for your are we support. On the same page? Are we on the same page here? Yeah, Allison? absolutely. <laughs> I cannot I cannot agree way more with you. Santa, and that brings you another question where kids are asking for presents. Do you have a limit on how many presents can you bring per kid or how do you manage that? That's very good. I'll tell you what. Truth be told, I, Santa sometimes, Santa tries to do things that are equitable, not always equal. Now, the children who are listening and watching may wonder, what in the world does that mean? <laughs> well, for me to be equitable, it means that I try to be fair in delivering something that will make that child happy. Happiness is the number one thing on Christmas morning. I will give you an example. Years ago, there was a young boy and he had two brothers and one of the brothers received one item and that was a bicycle. Now it was just one item, 
but that's a pretty big gift, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and of course, the children don't need to know about this, but the cost of building it and putting it together in my workshop, it, sometimes it can be expensive. Yeah. So sometimes I'll give one big one to one child, but then I'll give several smaller gifts to a brother or sister. And what that is, is being just fair and equal so that both of them can be happy. Now, I'll tell you what, that little boy who received the bicycle and that other little boy who received the 12 magic tricks for Christmas, they were happy, not just for themselves, but for their brother. Oh, you see how that works? That's beautiful. So, so that's the best way that I know to answer that question. But it is a good question. Yeah. So, Santa, I, I can't imagine what it's like to have a job that you're just able to go around making people happy and feel good all the time. That's being a realtor. Oh. <laughs> oh look at how on the that. day. Yes. Put in a little we plug try, right there. But, you know. Yeah, by well, the way, Santa, has anyone asked for a house for Christmas? Send them my way. Can, yeah. <laughs> All the time, and I know where to send them. I will do that. You know, uh, the two of you must love, speaking of houses and Christmas, Yeah. you must love the film Miracle on 34th Street. Oh, beautiful film. Because one. That little girl, Natalie Wood, that in my favorite version of the film, there have been four of them, but that's my favorite. She wishes for a house and she doesn't think that she'll be able to get it because she doesn't believe in Santa. And yet she sees the house and she and her mother and her new stepdad run in and it's empty and it's available and it's theirs. And then she looks in the corner and she sees the cane and the hat left by Kris Kringle. What a wonderful tale of Christmas and real estate, wouldn't you say? <laughs> I would 100% agree with you. It's a great story. <laughs> yes. I'm so, I sort of went off in a tangent. I am known to do that sometimes. You know, I, I might look pretty good for 798, but that's pretty much how old I am. 798, Santa? I don't look a year older than 790. Well, let me tell you, we just had an episode not too long ago about Botox. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, you know. Mrs. I've Claus had might be asking for that for Christmas. You know, Mrs. Claus is perfect just the way she is. Oh, Sam, you're a charmer. Love well, you know, uh, we, we've been together for some, like I say, uh, for more than 700 years and that's a long time to to have a wonderful marriage but sometimes she'll say to me santa you might consider not botox but maybe <laughs> eating more healthy so yes it's true on the off season i have to eat salads and greens <laughs> and, and fruits and all those good things because that is what's going to keep me alive and well just like but the that's kids a wonderful question. just like the kids that they write to your letter if they want to be nice they need to eat their vegetables i remember i had to do that right it's very important and, and not just because we think it's the right thing for them to do to give them a balance but because it's the healthy thing for them to do yeah because we want those children to be around with us for a long long time as well that's right well how is mrs claus mrs claus i'm so happy you asked and she will be thrilled that you asked she is doing very very well she is sometimes busier than I am because she's doing all the admin. So there's a lot oh. of administration. You know, the two of you know about paper. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Contra contracts. Yeah, oh, yes. you're doing the easy part. She's doing all the, <laughs> all the behind the scenes work. I, I, listen, I'm, as Allison said earlier, she couldn't imagine a job where your job, your career is to make people happy. I, it's the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. But yes, I have to rely on Mrs. Claus to do the paperwork, the, the work that's not so very fun. But uh, we help her out and we do it with eggnog and hot cocoa and uh, cookies and all the wonderful <laughs> things you might imagine are at the North Pole. <laughs> Mr. Santa, yes. now that you mentioned the, the off season, what do you yes. actually do after the 25th? So you come back home, you give in all the presents, kids are happy, 
they're playing with everything you're back i'm pretty sure that you want your reindeer to take a break but then comes down in january still cold in the north pole then what do you do two words fly fishing <laughs> Santa loves to get out there and wear his suspenders with his gaiters pulled up to his knees. And I get out in the in the water and I whip that fly out there and do the best I can to see if I can get some pike or bass or something like that. But I, Santa loves to fish. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I so wish so. that I could be there now, but that's what I look forward to. And I spend most of my time doing that. A little bit of golf. Golf uh, in the okay. North Pole. Nice. Well, listen, the North Pole is an extraordinary facility. Uh -huh. it, is, is, it is a multi-billion dollar complex with all sorts of, of underground areas. There's a grotto and there's a bowling alley and there's all sorts of things because, you know, Santa can't spend a lot of time in the lower 48. I really need to be there in the North Pole uh, to take care of business and to stay safe. There is a security measure there, yeah. of course. That is so interesting. I know. I've learned all kinds of things. I wish I could go and spend one day over there with you in the North Pole, Santa. You know what, Carlos? Maybe we need to make that happen. Oh, yeah. Yes. This is Absolutely. It, 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 listen, if it happened to Will Ferrell, it can happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, you better well. be watching that red sack on Christmas Eve, Santa. You might have some visitors coming back with you. I I know I have to be very, very careful. Yeah, <laughs> be careful now this year. Now this discussion, you know a lot of my secrets. That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, we appreciate you, Mr. Santa, to come and, and, and talk with us and, and, and give us some of your secrets we really like, which, you know, like make, all of them make sense, actually. You know, and you think about all the questions that we had and He's you look at the He's a reasonable guy. Like, pff, why I didn't think about that's that? That's right. But, uh, well, that's, I'm so glad that I could have the two of you. And you both are just such nice people. And I hope the best for you this year and the upcoming year. Because I know the housing market can be sort of like a reindeer ride. Am I correct? Oh, just yeah. Up oh, yeah. and down and up and down. But up always and interesting. <laughs> always yes, interesting. And you two are able to weather that storm. And we just so appreciate the work that you do to help keep everyone indoors and safe. In Nice houses. Awesome. Uh, Carlos, I did want to say, you know, I sometimes have a little bit of time to go out and visit and go to parties and corporate events and things like that. And I have a phone number of Mrs. Claus. Okay. And because you two have been so wonderful, I'm going to offer to your viewers special access to Ooh. Mrs. Claus's personal phone number at the North Pole. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's amazing, that, Santa. <laughs> as I give that to you, just know that if children who are watching are interested in having a personal visit from me throughout the month of December at a specific event, they need to ask their parents first. In fact, they probably need to go to mom and dad and say, hey, can we get Santa, the real Santa, to come visit us? And there's a small fee involved, of course, because I have to feed those reindeer. Yeah. But if you call any time throughout the next week or so, I'm sure we'll do the best we can to have me come visit you in the Midlands area. I will be coming down from the North Pole to the Midlands within the next three weeks. That is I awesome. Will. So I'll give you that number in a minute, but uh, a couple of plugs. <laughs> I am going to be in residence at Soda City in Columbia, South Carolina on Main Street awesome. for the next three Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And we have a photo tent that will be set up and Mrs. Claus will be there too. You get to visit and, and meet her. By the way, Mrs. Claus is venezuelan oh. so that's going to be sort of fun oh does, does she fun. does she call you san nicolas that's how he used she, to call oh, you back then she calls me to the dinner table and that's about <laughs> that. so i'll be at soda city the next three weekends and then on the 15th 
16th and 17th, I'll be at Noma Warehouse in Columbia at 2222 Sumter Street. And there are specific times that sort of change when I'm going to be there. And there you can come and get your photos for free. Awesome. Come to, come to Soda City. There's a little fee, but that's okay. You get some personal time with me. Go to Noma Warehouse. We'll see if we can't set you up with some free photos. Now, for all of your viewers, that phone number for Mrs. Claus, and maybe parents might like to write this down, 803-429-2803. That number, again, one more time, is 803-429-2803. Three, And that's the number you call if you would like to book your very own visit from Santa Claus just prior to Christmas. You're such a magical man that you were able to get a, a, an 803 number. It took me forever to get one. <laughs> hey, he has connections you, you don't have. You got connections. I bet you well, do. Well, sometimes Santa is not just magical, but sometimes a capitalist as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, well. I want to make, I tease, but I want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity if they would like to have a visit from me. And we try to make everything economically sound. And, you know, we just want to come and have a really good time with this many families as possible. And Santa, I'm pretty sure that by you doing this type of stuff, it helps you to be to give more presents to the kids on Christmas days. I'm 100% sure about that. <laughs> you are right about that. Uh, you are absolutely correct. The more visits I make, uh, the, the better a Christmas it can be for everyone. So I try to, whatever I Santa receives, I try to give back to my community. I think we should all do something like that. Absolutely. 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 Well, Santa, thank you so much. We know how busy you are, and this was just an absolute treat for us. Thank well, you very thank you much. So much. Yes, thank you for having me. And I'll leave you with a few little words here. You've invited me here to spread Christmas cheer. These seasons, greetings so bright. But now I must go off into the snow to prepare for that really big night. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Happy Santa. Holiday. Merry Christmas, Thank Santa. You Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. That was so much fun. It was. I you got to watch the episode again. And take, I think I have a smile the entire interview. I think my face is going to hurt tonight from smiling so much because I'm like, it's I mean, so much fun. it was very, very, very difficult to get the real Santa. Addison. I, listen, I, had I to give pull, you props for that. I had to pull all my connections and make a couple offers they couldn't refuse. <laughs> and finally, and I was give able to get back some Christmas gifts. And, and you know what the crazy thing is that after I did all this stuff and, you know, like I put myself in situations of danger just to get able to communicate with that guy in the North Pole, it's like, oh, Here's here's my wife's number. <laughs> you can text Even her. Even out to everybody. Yeah, there you go. I can be there. I'm like, Santa, I thought, thought you were special. <laughs> but you know what? He's going to be around here, which is uh, very cool. He's going to be in person in the Midlands, you know, which uh, uh, he's a real one, by the way. You know, it doesn't happen too often. Yeah, get to take your kids to see him, get a picture with Santa and let them put in their last minute wishes. And don't forget to thank 30 Minutes Down South for bringing you the real Santa straight off from the North Pole. That's you know? right. Not, not, not a fake one. This is a real one. The I can tell one. you that. Yes. Anyway, um, we have. 30, 30 Minutes on the Nose. Uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, no, we, we still got a couple more episodes before still, Christmas, you right? You can always say Merry yeah, Christmas. Yeah, you just say Merry Christmas, right? This That's is official, right. official, 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 official Christmas started. I mean, after you interview Santa, it has to be officially Christmas, Can't get much Christmas, better than right? that. No. I mean, I mean, we raised the bar so high. I know. <laughs> Who's going to be our next guest? Never can tell. Nah, you never know, right? Uh, we got connections. She does, too. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. See you later. Bye.